I believe God, I believe God, that he would do just what he said, trust and obey, there's no other way, I believe, I believe God, oh I believe God, I believe God, that he would do just what he said, trust and obey, no other way, I believe, I believe God, oh I believe God, I believe God, that he would do just what he said, trust and obey, no other way. I believe, I believe God, oh, I believe God, I believe God, that he would do just what he said, trust and obey, no other way, I believe, I believe God, oh, I believe God, I believe God, that he would do just what he said, trust and obey, no other way. I believe, I believe God. Well, God bless you, Tiana. God bless you, Elder and Sister Bailey. God bless you, Mother Howard. Good morning, Sister Batista. Good morning. Hallelujah, Sister Sarah. God bless you, Sister Riley. Good morning, Mother Morris. God bless you, Sister Cleckley. Good morning, Monique. God bless you. Good morning, Dr. and Mrs. Haywood. God bless you. Good morning, Adele. Good morning, Deja. God bless you, my niece. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Regina. God bless you, Sister Dykes. God bless you, Sister Howard. Good morning, Mother Pride. God bless you. <clears throat> Good morning, Sister Polk. God bless you, Dion. Good morning, Brother Paul. God bless you, my friend. Good morning. Praise the Lord, Mother Holman. God bless you, Mother Fears. Good morning, Sister Sessions. God bless you, Mother Pride. God bless you, Sister Pedlar, Sister McCloud. God bless you, Bishop and Mother Joseph. Thank God for you. God bless you, Sister Margaret. God bless you, Sister Yolanda. Good morning, Vanessa. Good morning, Sister Cleckley. God bless you, Sister Annie. God bless you, Mother Walker. Good morning, Dr. Haywood. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Chambers. God bless you, Sister Kathy. Good morning, Deacon Davis. God bless you and Mother Barbara. Good morning, Pastor Hargrove. God bless you and Lady Hargrove. Good morning, Gwen. God bless you. Good morning, Kim. God bless you. Good morning, Elder Smith. God bless you, sir. Good morning, Sister Marie. God bless you, Mother Taylor. Good morning, Sister Robinson Jacobs. Praise the Lord, Thomasina. Good morning, Sister Kenlock. Good morning, Sister Carsetta. God bless you, Geneva. Good morning, Paris. Good morning, Sylvia. God bless you, my friend. Good morning. Sabrina, good morning, Deacon Briggs. God bless you. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. God bless you, Sister Walker. God bless you, Sister Hamilton. God bless you, Sister Stokes. Praise the Lord, Lady Holden. God bless you, and Bishop. Well, good morning and praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to spend a few moments with you with a biblical meditation and in prayer for more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. And we continue to witness the manifestation of God that is coming through faith and coming through prayer. You know, I asked us on Monday to make a Monday sacrifice. And I praise God, I had a conversation with someone who um, said that they had put out a lot of money in the month of May. They had already gone into the red because they had put out more than they had taken in in the month of May. But they made the sacrifice anyway. They moved in faith. They moved in obedience, made the sacrifice anyway, and then received word that they would receive, listen to me, double of what they had spent for 
the month of May. They are receiving a check for double of what they spent in the month of May. Why? Because God provides. And as I said to you in that lesson, you will never outgive God. You will never, my friend, outgive God. And so God is going to bless. He's going to reward. He's going to strengthen and do what we know he can do. And there are some intangible things that we're praying for, but we're believing God for those things as well. So as always, if you're on Facebook, you can type your request in the chat or you can inbox Reginald Davis or inbox Refuge Temple Church. If you are on Instagram, you can type your request in the chat or you can um, um, direct message Pastor RJD, Pastor RJD. And everybody has access to the text line. And if you want to text your prayer request, please text it to 336 567 Five three five eight. That's three three six five six seven five three five eight. And we will add them to the prayer book, to the prayer list. Believing God with you, believing God with you for the provision, for the doors opening, for the blessings that only He is able to provide. All right, I, I, I'm excited. I'm still excited because we're in Hebrews chapter eleven. I told you that anytime God speaks to us concerning faith. It it's because he's planning to bless us. When God is trying to build your faith, when God is trying to enhance your faith, it's because God has a purpose in what he is doing to bless your life. And you need the faith to lay hold to what God has promised he would do. You need the faith to grab and to and to reach out and to claim whatever it is God is preparing for you. Your blessing has already been prepared in the heavenlies. We're just waiting on manifestation. We are just waiting on manifestation. Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 11, and I want to read just verse 7 today. I want to read only verse 7. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 7. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not yet seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he con he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. The righteousness which is by faith. And I want to talk to you this morning from the thought, faith to make a move. Faith to make a move. There is a direct, I mean direct connection between faith and action. Faith and action. In fact, you really can't proclaim faith if all you're doing is providing a mental assent. Just mentally saying in myself, I believe, I believe. It's good to say, but you really can't say you're living in faith if you're not acting in faith. Faith must be tied to action and it must be tied to action that is motivated by obedience. In other words, you are motivated and you are believing and trusting God for what you know he is able to do. And because you trust God, because you trust God, you are moving in that faith element of believing him, of trusting him, of acknowledging him. And so your faith in obedience becomes action. And very rarely, does God tell you to do nothing? Very rarely does God say, don't do anything. Sometimes he does say, stand still. He does. But in most cases, when God speaks to us in faith, it's because he is pushing us to do something. Some action that testifies to our obedience, some action that testifies to our confidence, some action that testifies that we genuinely and legitimately believe God. Because what you believe is demonstrated by what you do. Let me say it again. What you do or what or what you believe is genuinely demonstrated by what you do. That's why the writer in the book of James said that faith without works is dead. That faith 
that is inactive, faith that is dormant, faith that has no activity tied to it is a dead faith. Because if you believe God, you're going to have to eventually act on what you believe, act on what you know God is able to do. And so with this one verse, he, he reminds us of Noah. He remind the writer in Hebrews reminds us of Noah. Noah, who to, by our accounts was an ordinary person. Noah was not exceptional, but the world in which Noah lived was wicked. The Bible says the thoughts of sin were continual. They were constantly in rebellion against God, constantly disobeying the tenets or the ordinances of God, just doing whatever they wanted to do. Sounds a lot like 2022. But that was the nature of the world in which Noah lived. And the world was so perverse. The world was so wicked. The world was so unrighteous that God determined that he would destroy the entire globe. He said, I'm sick of man. Man has disappointed me. Man won't obey. Man won't follow. And a lot of these people were the descendants of Cain. Remember, Cain, after he slew Abel, the Lord allowed him to live. And he, the Lord gave him a wife. And he, he was allowed to raise up seed, but in that seed, there was nothing but wickedness. They were talented, they were gifted, they had abilities, they had intellect, but on top of all of that, they were wicked. They were wicked, and that wickedness just flew in the face of God until finally God said, I've had enough. But in the midst of God's plans for the destruction of earth, the Bible says, <coughs> excuse me, that Noah found grace in the eyes of God. What allowed Noah to find grace? His faith. What allowed Noah to find grace? His faith. You cannot have the grace of God extended without somebody believing God. Somebody's got to trust God. Somebody's got to honor God. Somebody has to obey God. And in Noah's faith, he found grace, the Bible says, in the eyes of God. He found this grace and God moves to Noah and says, Noah, I'm going to destroy the entire earth. I'm going to flood the earth. Now, this was exceptional because because if you read your Bible at this time, there was no rain. There was no flood. All of the crops and the vegetation were watered by the mist that came up from the rivers. But there was no falling rain. And so God says, I'm going to do something that I've never done before. I'm going to make it rain. I'm going to send the rain down. I'm going to cause the water in the earth to come up. And I'm going to flood out this entire globe and destroy everything on the globe. I'm going to destroy it because the Lord says, I'm sick of man's iniquity. Well, Noah has to believe because once again, it had never rained. He had never seen rain. He probably had to say, Lord, what is rain? Because he had never seen it. But yet when God told him what rain was and when God told him what to do, Noah starts building a boat and he builds the boat on dry land. Another act of faith. It once again, never drained. I don't know if there, had ever, if there ever were boats. I don't know if they were sailing, but God tells Noah to build this massive ship in which he can spare and save his family and save the animals. And Noah moves in faith. But it's a faith that people did not understand. Now, I want to be very real about this, that you have to be prepared that everybody will not co-sign to your faith. Let me say it again. Everybody will not co-sign to your faith. God's going to push you out there to believe him and others are going to even doubt your sanity. Others are going to doubt your rationality. Others are going to doubt your lucidity because you're doing something that in their mind doesn't make sense. But if God told you to do it, you need to act in the faith of God. Noah starts building this ark out of God's design, God's dimensions. He gathers the wood. He gathers the pitch. He gathers everything he needs to make this massive boat that is going to save living creatures and save his family. The Bible says he builds it and they mocked They mocked Noah. They thought Noah had lost his mind. He said, get ready, it's going to rain. And it took him 120 years to build this ark. So he's building it. He's taking his time. He's devoting his life to his obedience to God. And people don't understand. My friends, people will not always understand your faith. They will not always 
always understand what God is saying to your spirit. But if God is speaking to you, God is trying to bless you. Let me share. I shared this, I think, but let me share it again. Right before God gets ready to do something in your life, he challenges your obedience. Now, Schofield says that a dispensation is a period of time in which man is tested with respect to some act of obedience concerning the will of God. In other words, God tests man, and we know some of us who study Schofield know the various dispensations, innocence, conscience, etc. Now, but sometimes I believe there's a personal dispensation. When God is talking to you, when God is moving upon you and saying to you, you need to do something with respect to obedience to me. It's sometimes things you don't understand. And if you're like me, you have asked God the question, Lord, why? But God comes back and says, do what I tell you to do. And you act in obedience. God is setting you up. Oh God, for deliverance. God is setting you up for a miracle. God is setting you up for a breakthrough, but he is now determining, do you have the faith to believe what he is going to provide? God's going to tell you to do something. It might be to pray for a certain person. It might be to give in a certain area area. It might be to do a certain act of service and everything you do, you have to do it in obedience to the will of God because there's a blessing, there's deliverance on the other side of your obedience. Oh, I hear you, God. On the other side, on the other side of your act of obedience, there is a miracle waiting for you, but God wants to know, will you trust and obey what he has commanded you to do? Will you trust and obey what he has ordered for you to do. And so in this context, Noah moves in obedience and he does it to save his house. Oh God, this jumped out at me when I read this and meditated about saving your house. Oh my God, there are so many of you that are watching, that are asking God to save your children, to save your grandchildren, to save your spouse. When this came to me, this was confirmation that God is about to move in the life of somebody. You You've been praying for your children. You've been believing God for your family. And God is going to save your house, your son, your daughter. I don't care what they're doing right now. I don't care what they're engaged in right now. I don't care what sin has them trapped right now. God's going to move upon your family and save your children. I believe it. I believe it is in my spirit to tell you, just keep on building your your ark. Oh my God. Noah kept building. His sons joined him. Their wives joined him. His wife joined him. And Noah saved his family. Oh God, just keep moving in the faith of God. It doesn't matter if right now they don't believe. You keep moving in faith. It doesn't matter if right now they're not coming. You keep moving in faith. It doesn't matter if right now they're standing back thinking that you've lost your mind because you keep praying for them. You keep praying for them. You keep believing God for them because God is going to move in the lives of your family. As Noah built the ark, he saved his house. And as you build the ark of safety in prayer, in obedience, in fasting, in believing God, you're building the ark to save your house. You're building the ark to save your family. You're building the ark to save your children. You just keep building that ark. Keep building it in prayer. Keep building it in obedience. Keep building it in a confidence and a trust in God and watch God do what we know he is able to do. When he built the ark, he saved his house, but he also condemned the world for their disobedience and their contrariness. And you know, if you read the story of Noah in Genesis, when the rain finally started to come, it was too late. When the rain started to come, it was too late. God had brought the animals in, God put Noah and his family in, and the Bible says that God shut the door. God shut the door. Noah didn't close that door. Noah didn't close the door. And I'm thinking Noah being a human being, as people began crying and banging on the door as the floodwaters rose that Noah might have tried to open the door. But the Bible says God shut the door. Now, let me just say this. That there is a window 
in which God deals with you concerning obedience. There's a window in which God speaks to you concerning moving and action and doing what he's commanded. And when that window closes, it's closed. Oh God, the, the story of Noah, Jesus used as an analogy concerning the rapture. That as the days of Noah were, so are the days now when men shall be drinking and marrying, giving in marriage, reviling, doing all kinds of things. And then the judgment of God comes when he takes the church out of the world. And the same way that the church was taken out of the world, oh God, oh, Noah was taken from the world in the flood by the boat, by the ark. Guess what? There's an ark coming for us and that's the rapture. When the Lord comes in himself and delivers the church out of this world and there's a window, saints, there's a window that we have to be moving in right now. Oh God, you have to have enough faith to make the move. I know that our faith is not popular. I know that religion and faith and spirituality is not seen as being in vogue. Everybody wants to do their own thing. And my God, sin is rampant in the earth. But God has somebody that is building an ark. Oh, Shataye. God's got somebody right now that's moving in obedience to his word, that's moving towards salvation, that's moving in a life of holiness and righteousness, that's living under the protection of God. And God's going to gather us into this ark. It's coming, saints. It's coming, saints. It's coming, saints. And I know people say, I've never seen the rapture. Well, the people in Noah's time had never seen rain. But my friend, if you're not saved, you're going to see something you have never seen before. When God takes the church out of this world, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of an archangel, the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. But we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. You need to make that move. Oh God, if you're not saved, you need to make that move. If you're backslidden, you need to make that move. If you've drifted from the ark of safety, if you've grown weak, if you've grown cold, my brother, my sister, you need to make that move. Have enough faith to prepare your soul for eternity. Have enough faith to move in obedience to the word of the living God. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. My gracious God, Lord, I love you. I honor you. I bless you for your goodness, for your mercy, and for your grace. Lord, you continue to show yourself to be the God that you are. You continue to reveal yourself in power, in demonstration, in efficacy, Lord, that you are the God that never fails. And we love you today. And we honor your name for your goodness, for your mercy, for your grace, for your love. Lord, you've been so good to us. Lord, you've been better than we could have been to ourselves. And I thank you, God, for waking me up this morning. I thank you for my sanity. I thank you for my lucidity. I thank you for salvation today. I thank you for being able to get myself prepared so I could join my brothers and sisters in prayer. And God, I thank you for everybody that has come from all over the world to be a part of this fellowship. And I'm praying first that your spirit will be through out this prayer room. Lord, whether they're on Instagram or whether they're on YouTube or Facebook or the conference call, I want your anointing to touch them now in the name of Jesus. I want your power to be revealed now. Lord God, so many petitions are before you. I'm praying, my God, that you would grant the petitions, that you would save families, save households, deliver people right now. Lord, whatever they're bound by, Lord, in the name of Jesus, destroy the Break the chain, break the fetter, break the confinement, and release them. Release them so they can come to know you as Savior and Lord. My God, we're praying today for every name that's on the prayer list, every name in the prayer book, every name that's been sent by chat or messenger. My God, we're praying today that you would touch, that you would deliver, that you would set free. We're praying today, God, that you would bring help to those that stand in need, my God, in the name of 
of Jesus. We're praying for every soul everywhere. My God, whatever the need is, Lord, we're lifting it up before you. We're praying today for Antonia. We're praying for Helen Pinckney today, for Terry Davis, for the Dorset family. We're praying for the Davis family. We're praying for the Mother's Board of Greater Refuge Temple in Lakeland, Florida. We're praying for Dr. and Mrs. Haywood and the family. We're praying for Caroline Williams. We're praying for Mother Johnson today. We're praying for Grandma Washington. We're praying for Travis that needs a job today. God, open the door and make the provision. We're praying for the Johnson family. We're praying for Cammy and the Gates family, for the Harrell family, the Deserve family. We're praying for Zion today. We're praying for Bishop Darrell and Lady Kathy Forehand. We're praying for Janice Gordon, for Reginald Britt, for Tish Lee. We're praying for marriages everywhere. God, that you would strengthen relationships. We're praying for the unemployed. My God, that wants a job and needs a job. My God, provide the job. We're praying for BJ Emmanuel. We're praying for Deshaun. We're praying for Raquel today. We're praying for Brandy. We're praying, my God, for Deacon and Sister Graves this morning. I'm praying for Deja today. We're praying for Willie May. We're praying for Galena, for Daisy. We're praying, my God, for Seanette and Charles as they travel. We're praying for Sheila Pettiford today. We're praying for Cecilia Jenkins. We're praying for the Morgan Jackson family. We're praying for revival to break out everywhere. God, we're praying right now, my God, for the Pitt County Homeless Shelter. We're praying for Diane Mansman. We're praying for the Street family, for Scott Morgan, for Janice Moore. We're praying for Pastor and Lady Alde today. We're praying for James Monk, for Naomi Messam. We're praying for Karen Monk today. We're praying for Nicole Fleming. We're lifting up Bishop Robert Spellman today. We're praying for Natalie Natalie's daughter. We're praying for students everywhere that are testing and finishing their work for the semester. God, give them grace and strength and help them now. We're praying for the Pulliam family. We're praying, oh God, for the Park, for the Perkins and the Robinson family. We're praying for Pastor Alex Eyelash. God, everybody on the prayer list, everybody in the chat, Lord, everybody even in the unspoken request, things we have not talked about or shared, but God, we believe you for them. We trust you, my Shania. We trust you God for deliverance. We trust you for opening doors and making ways. We trust you, God, for healing and deliverance now in the name of Jesus. As we pray for the sick, we pray for Diana Williams. We pray for Pauline Gilchrist. Oh, God, we pray for Chandra Little today. We pray for Sadie Delaney. We pray for Elaine Scott. We lift up Mother Celestine Peters. We pray for Angela Parker. We pray for those suffering with diabetes, hypertension, pa pancreatic cancer. My God, you are a healer of every kind of disease. We pray for Nigel. We pray for Shirley McKnight today. We pray for Reginald King right now and we're believing you God for healing. Remember those with breathing issues. Look on Sarah today. Look on Evelyn Johnson, Tiffany Hill. Look on that baby Miracle Destiny. Look on Janetta today. Look on Missionary Horton right now. Look on Cavante. Look on Brown. Look on Lady Staten this morning. God, remember Barbara Coleman. Remember Mother Wilson's eyes today. Look on Melissa Holden. Everybody that has a sickness. God, look on Bishop Alfonso Brooks, Mother Shirley Clark, Mother Evangeline Jenkins, Lady Andrea Maxwell. God, look on Brother Wiggins. Look on Brother and Mother Sherrod. Look on Deacon and Mother Garland today. My God, touch and heal. Look on Pastor Carr, Elder Tyson, Elder Smith, Lord, with your healing virtue. My God, remember the people now that have a need for healing. Look on Mother Foster, Henry J, and Brother Cliff this morning. My God, look on them in a special way. My God, Remember Mother Tanaj. Remember Mother Holman today. Remember Missionary Simmons, Lord, with your healing touch. Remember Cynthia, Catherine, Duchess today. Oh, God, let your healing, oh, God, continue in their lives. My God, look on Marlette. Look on Maurice. Look on Tony today. In the name of Jesus, look on Chris today. Everybody everywhere that's battling a sickness, my God, send healing into every hospital. Send healing into every ICU unit, every dialysis unit, every cancer ward. Every COVID ward, my God, bring the healing that only you can provide. Lord God, anybody watching me now, oh God, that needs healing, touch their bodies. In the name of Jesus, let healing flow now, oh God, through the airways, through the atmosphere. And Lord, touch somebody now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Remember those even in hospice, Lord, you can turn things around because you are a healer. And by your very stripes, Lord, we are healed. God, I'm praying today. 
for grieving people everywhere. I'm praying for the family of Mother Maruka. I'm praying for the Langley family, the Claude family, the Overby and Wiggins family. I'm praying, oh God, for James Perry and his family in the loss of his daughter. The Gist family, my God, in the loss of Kevin. I'm praying, my God, for Bishop Willie Davis and his family and the Mount Calvary Way of the Cross Church family. I'm praying for Apostle Mario Davis, for Dr. Marion Davis Patterson. I'm praying for Anaya Hatcher, for Bishop Staten today. We're praying for Mother Foster and Brother Cliff, my God, in the loss of their son. We're praying for Pat today. We're praying, my God, for Sister Burke in the loss of Minister Burke. We're praying for the Troublefield family, the Washington family, the Parker family. We lift up the family of Norman Davis. We pray for the Thomas family. We pray for the True Light family of San Diego. We pray for the Jackson family. We lift up, my God, the Refuge Church of Talladega. My God, every grieving person everywhere, God, stretch out your hand now. God, remember the Bynums, the Taylors, the Lloyds. Remember, my God, the Carters. Remember the Giles family. Remember the Dockeries. Remember the White family today. Oh, God, everybody that's grieving everywhere, in the name of Jesus, Lord, touch and strengthen. God, I pray today for Anita and the Brian Hopkins family. I pray today for Margie and the McLean Melvin family. God, I pray, my God, hallelujah for the Ransom family. I pray for, oh God, the Gary Porter family. Remember Monique and Sean. God, I'm praying today, God. Oh God, for Brenda and the Alan McNeely family. I'm praying, oh God, interceding today, my God, for the Alan Williams family. Strengthen Trell and Ryan. I'm praying for the Clark family. God, strengthen, my God, Tommy and Michelle. Everybody, everywhere that is grieving a loss, God, give them grace and strength now. We know, oh God, that the weight of grief is heavy, but we're trusting you, God, to comfort and strengthen them now. Remember the Mays, the Dunlaps, the Purdy's, the Sneeds. Remember the Winninghams. Remember, my God, the Banks family. Remember, my God, the Washington Fields family. Lord, look on them in a special way. Look on the Middletons and the Taylors this morning. God, I'm praying today that you would remember, oh God, the Felix family, the Zapata family, the Briggs family, that you would remember the Mannix, the Boodrums, my God, the Gleans, the Arthurs, that you would remember, my God, everybody everywhere that's grieving, the Phillips family, the Josephs, God, everybody that's grieving, God, give them comfort, give them grace upon every grieving widow, every grieving widower, every grieving child, every grieving parent, every grieving sibling. My God, remember the Davises, the Harbisons, remember the Austins today. Lord, let your healing touch, touch the spirit today in the name of Jesus. I'm praying today for the body of Christ, every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, every bishop and elder, every first lady, every pastor's child, every mother and missionary, my God, every minister and deacon, every young person in the church, God. I'm praying today. I'm praying today, God, that you would touch and deliver, oh God, the body of Christ. Increase the faith of the church so that we can act in your will, so we can act in obedience. God, help us to believe and trust you now. Send revival. Send revival upon the people of God. Lord, I'm praying today, my God, for first responders, essential workers. I'm praying today for, oh God, students and school employees. I'm praying today for everybody that works to help a person in a hospital, a nursing home, a rehab center, private duty, God. I'm praying today for people that work in banks and clinics and stores and offices, God. Cover and protect. And Lord, even as these numbers go up and down, I'm praying for your hand of protection to be upon the uninfected. And I'm praying for healing upon those that are sick today. My God, touch them now. Oh God, even those suffering long-term effects, God, touch them now. And Lord, Lord, while you're moving in the earth, Lord, we need, my God, healing in the land because the land is sick. The people are sick, God. Oh, God, battles and wars in the Ukraine, everywhere. But we're trusting you, God, to touch and deliver today. So heal the land, oh God, of sin. Heal the land of violence. Heal the land of hatred, of jealousy. Heal the land of racism, of sexism, of all forms of injustice, God. Heal the land today, God. Help us in this day as we traverse, Lord. Keep us under your precious blood. Provide for us. Make ways for us. Keep us, my God. Bless our going out and our coming in. And we will give your name the glory, the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name. 
Amen, amen, amen. Everybody on this line, come on, join me in giving God glory right now. Everybody on the prayer line, wherever you are, Instagram, Facebook, conference call, YouTube, come on, give God the glory, give God the glory, give God the glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, my God, hallelujah. Oh, God, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. This is my declaration for today. Let my faith, faith move me to obedience and action. Let my faith move me to obedience and action. My faith is not real when it's dormant. My faith is not real when it's just sitting. My faith is not real when I'm not doing something in reflection to the obedience of my faith. But Lord, let my faith move me to obedience and action. I want to be found doing what God called me to do. The same way that Noah did not know when the flood would come, we don't know when Jesus is coming. But when we want to be found ready, we want to be found prepared. We want to be found acting and living our faith daily. So Lord, let me, let my faith move me to obedience and to action. God bless you today. Thank you so much for being with us. It's my sincere prayer that this biblical meditation and prayer has blessed you and that your Wednesday is off to a great start. Look, you can stay connected to Refuge Temple all day today. This prayer service is available on our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and you can stay connected with that. Hallelujah. You can also stay connected through our podcast, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and Spotify. Thank God for those who join us by Instagram, Facebook, conference call, YouTube. Just keep coming to prayer. Keep coming to prayer and keep staying with us because God is blessing us because we are praying, not just Pastor Davis, but we are praying. So stay connected. You can also stay connected to our podcast, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and Spotify. And all of this is available to you. And we also want to invite you to our radio broadcast. It airs every day, Monday through Friday at 1130 a.m. on GregoryGospel.com. Every day, Monday through Friday at 1130 on GregoryGospel.com. Let me thank everybody, everybody who sees and sows and shares with this ministry. Your gifts help us to do the things that we need to do, and we appreciate your giving. And if you want to be a blessing, you can mail a gift to Refuge Temple, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. That's Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can give online. Our website is Refuge Temple. N is in North, C is in Carolina. Com, refuge temple nc.com and you can make a gift on the donate page if you have givelify you can give the givelify just type in refuge temple burlington and look for the picture of the church to know you're in the right place and make your gift there if you have cash app our cash app is dollar sign the number one refuge dollar sign one refuge is our cash app and you can make your gift there but we thank you for your giving but we thank you most of all for praying because god God is moving through prayer. So let's keep praying. Let's keep praying. Please pray for me. Pray for Lady Davis. Pray for my pray our children. Pray for my dad. Pray for my sisters, my in-laws, my nieces, my nephews, our entire family. Just pray for us. Pray for Refuge Temple that God will continue to bless us and pray for everybody that's connected with this prayer and their respective ministries that God would bless them in an awesome, awesome way. We're moving in faith, saints. We're moving in faith and God God is doing something in our midst. So let's keep believing, trusting, and acting in obedience. Look, you have a fantastic day. The grace of God be with you. Look, let me make this one announcement. This coming Saturday, this coming Saturday, I'll be in Eastern North Carolina at the Guiding Light Church in Camden, North Carolina. I'll be at Guiding Light this coming Saturday I believe the service time is seven o'clock. I believe I'll let you know exactly tomorrow, but I'll be in Camden on, on Saturday. And if you want to join us there in Eastern North Carolina, Eastern Virginia, meet us there. God's going to bless us in an awesome way. Look, you have a fantastic day. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you until next time. This is Pastor Davis. Shalom. Shalom.